wait room, we all wait, wait room music. Oh ho 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 Love your costume. So I love your Hunter S. Thompson uh, costume. Yeah, so per, you, per the request of Caretaker, I'm the one in three of Johnny Depp tonight. So I'm Hunter S. Thompson, I'm Rango, and uh, I'm, all, I'm a little bit of a hodgepodge with uh, Hunter S. Thompson and Rango with the circular glasses, and I'm Barnabas Collins with the uh, cape and the uh, ascot. That was perfect. She, she <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Oh, uh, there she is. Can you hear us okay? Sweet, yes. I gotta figure out okay. how to center myself. It's all mirrored. So. <laughs> yeah, how you guys doing? We're great. How are you? Hanging in there. Lucy's got her costume on too, and she's trying Aww. to find a way to get. <laughs> Here you go. She's uh, busy wandering around the room, so one of these one of these moments she'll come over here. But for now, yeah. <laughs> as it as the kids say, it do be like that sometimes, eh, Scuffles? It do be like that. So okay, you guys so are so up on modern terms. I'm so I'm so impressed. We we try. We we do it for the kids. We do it for the kids and for the bun. But mostly the kids. Yeah. Stay together for the kids. Yes. So this is a, the first time you two have met. Scuffles, Shayna, Shayna, Scuffles. Hello. I hear great things, Scuffles. Count tells oh. me many great things. Count tells me many great things about you as well, Shayna. It's nice to make Thank your you. acquaintance. Likewise. <laughs> All right, so we are here for the Count and Scuffle show, the only morning show at night. And uh, we're here for our uh, uh, pre-Halloween costume party. Um, so Shayna, tell us real quick. Uh, I, I don't want I, I, I to assume because we know what assuming does. So tell us who are you dressed as today? I am dressed as Harley Quinn. Nice. From Batman and all that good stuff, but uh, it's it's basically just a, a workout set. So really, I guess I'm just I'm ready to take on the bats and also get a good workout in. So, nice, so, very cool, so, very cool. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I guess that's why I have these cool little finger holes, thumb holes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they come in handy. You know, you, sure. so you, you're saying it's a it's a workout thing, so you probably do your um, you do your. Uh, um, Oh, I don't want to say squats because that's there. That's too stereotypical. <laughs> but you know, the, yeah, my deadlifts. And the... Deadlifts. That's that's honest. Okay, that's honestly what I was thinking about because because you, you're you, you know what you know what you're doing. Yeah, you know what you're doing. So, uh, not that pe not that people who squat don't know how they're doing, but like that's you're not just there for that. You're there for the whole. Not just yeah, not just the glutes. Right. There are other exactly. muscle groups, ladies. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Every gym person knows this, and if and if you don't know this, well, I don't know what to tell you, and I don't know what I'm talking about. So. Um, <laughs> they don't let me into gyms. They don't. Oh, that's no. discrimination. That no. is discrimination. That's well, awful. Yo, oh no one God. likes when forest trolls go into gyms. We stink too much. And we're ugly. Oh. oh, come on. That's pretty much just the gym population as a whole. So That's true. I don't I, know. I don't know why they'd be discriminating against you. You look like right, everybody I, else at the gym. <laughs> Especially on a Monday morning. Come on. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. I guess I yeah. do look like everyone on a Monday morning. Especially at the gym on a Monday morning. Yo. Yeah. Try 6 a.m. It's awful. Oh. <laughs> I'm not awake at 6 a.m. Or 4 a.m. That's smart. Yeah. Sorry, I just realized that my, my microphone was away from me this whole time. So I, I don't even know if the audience was able to hear my uh, joyful no the joyful noises that I made. But it... If we can even call them that, I don't know. I just scream. That's all I do. I just scream. But any hooser. So, okay. So, Shayna, we know uh, you're just. Well, let me just say to the audience, I'm, I'm particularly excited uh, that I've got Shayna and Scuffles in. Well, 
What am I saying? Scuffles, this is our show. It's not... It's not just <laughs> Yo, what? what are you talking about, Count? What, what are you talking about? Well, I got too giddy. I'm sorry. So, or as the Canadians say, sorry. If I said that right. So, I, but I'm particularly excited to have Shayna with us tonight because uh, Shayna... And, and I'm not just saying this because you're our guest tonight. I'm not saying this because you're my friend and that we, we've worked together for such a long time with the Mary Mob. Um, but you really are one of the most fascinating, interesting people that I know. Because you are a, a Jill of all trades, but a mistress or a master of all as well. So uh, I, I just kind of want to get into some of the stuff that... Uh, you know, you and I don't really have a chance to talk about, but I think that could be really enlightening about uh, uh, the work you do as, uh, for lack of a better word, as a sword girl. So what I want to know is, well, for one thing, is that even the right terminology to describe what you do or one of the things that you do? And and what what got you into swordsmanship? What, what inspired your love of uh, uh, medieval weaponry, as it were? Gotcha. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, that's a that's a lot of uh, questions that that need some answers. So I guess the thing that got me into all of the medieval swordsmanship type stuff is it sounds so goofy, but The Witcher on Netflix. I remember mm. watching it, and at first, I did not want to be a fan because I was like, they're going so far off the books. They don't care about the games, whatnot. And then I started like being like, okay, you know what? I need to just let all of my prejudices go and just like watch it and give it a chance. And so I got through like the whole first episode, by the way, I was totally wrong. Henry Cavill made that show. So now that he's gone, have no interest in it. But I remember at the end of the very first episode, they had this amazing sword fight choreography. And I just remember thinking like, that looks freaking awesome awesome and i started thinking is this like actually a thing do people really do this because i had been involved in martial arts more of like the hand-to-hand -hand combat for probably about seven years at that point this was back in 2020 so like right when covid happened the whole lockdowns and everything but i started looking into it and after having to look like for 30 minutes trying to figure out what this whole thing is called i finally found some resources and I found out there's this whole community of sword people that practice historical European martial arts or HEMA for short and it's really cool because at first I really just wanted to get into it because I was like you do some cool spins and it's like the cool choreography and not really even looking into more of the historical aspects of it but then the more that I started getting into it I was like I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I got my sword and COVID was happening. There were no schools around that were open, you know, teaching this stuff. So I had to kind of figure it out on my own. And um, and so I found a bunch of, like, awesome online resources, YouTube videos to, to help get me along. And it's all based from, like, you know, medieval times. So I think the earliest one is, like, 1300s. And it's for sword and buckler that's been recovered. And I think it was... It's originally German, and it's called I, the I-33, or also known as like the Walpurgis manuscript, and it's really cool. But um, so there's a lot of teachings based off that, and so that's what I started getting into to kind of teach myself like, okay, I guess this is how you do this move, and this is what it's called, so that by the time that I could start learning this in a school or whatever, I would be on the same page as everybody else. So the historical aspect of it kind of came in later. And it was more of my love of wanting to just jump around with swords and be have fun that originally got me into it. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much how that started. And it's been almost four years now that I've been involved in it. And it's just been so much fun kind of learning all these different types of fighting and just being involved in the community too, honestly. Like the, the HEMA community is just awesome and it kind of led me to um choreographing a sword fight for a short film that i recently mm -hmm. released and it ended up being so much fun and ended up playing at like combat con which is this huge convention for hema practitioners and everything so it's really just been, been an awesome journey and it's crazy that it's been almost four years now well, 
so I'm glad you actually brought that up because um, I, I did want to talk about some of the artistic things that you do too. So in addition to being um, Sword Girl, you are also an independent filmmaker. And this uh, this film uh, that you just mentioned, I, uh, forgive me again, uh, the title of it, uh, Sword, Sorcery, and... Sword, Skill, and Sorcery. Sword, Skill, and Sorcery. Um, it's, it really is a fantastic film. Um, it, it, what amazed me about it is, I mean, you, you did the fight choreography, you wrote it, uh, you directed it. Um, and you, you shot it on, um, well, you know what, don't let me tell the story. I know the story. I want to hear it more from you. Please tell us uh, a little bit more about the film, what it's about, um, and just, you know, a little bit of how you shot it. Scuffles, you're, you're going to like this one. <laughs> sure, yeah. So Sword, Skill, and Sorcery is essentially about this wannabe knight who is really just a baker's son, and he's a peasant. But he wants to become a knight. And so he finds this bounty for a wanted sorceress. And he stumbles across a woman walking alone in the woods. He thinks that it's her. Starts insulting her. Little does he know that she is actually the daughter of the most prestigious knight in the realm, essentially. They get in an altercation and, and just fun and hilarity ensues. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it is so is the so I know the film was on uh, the, the festival circuit for a while. Is it actually available to watch? It almost is. So okay. it's gonna be playing at Film Fest Knox in November. I think it's November tenth, I think I believe is when it screens. And then after that we're planning to distribute it online so that everybody can see it. So Perfect. Yeah. Whenever we can, uh, we'll 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 send you the leak scuffles because it's a it really is it's a fantastic film. She shot it in Murfreesboro, and but you wouldn't you wouldn't guess it because you are really you are convinced that you, she went back in time to I don't know the the twelfth century and shot this thing, but she didn't. She she shot it in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. And I was distracted because Lucy's here. This is the first time we're meeting Lucy. <laughs> yeah. This is, okay, so this is Lucy. She just came running around. She's dressed as a little bat for Halloween. So. Aww. Oh, <laughs> Igloo is gonna story. be a skunk this year. Is that loosely based off of true events? Uh, no. Actually, he was a skunk last year as well. But uh, it just so happened that he was sprayed by a skunk this year. So okay. he's stinky beast. <laughs> stinky beast. Okay, that just it just played out that way. I see. Okay, interesting. So Shana, let nature uh, take over. Right, let nature take over. Out of curiosity, do you have a, a favorite? Um, sort of harping back to Hema, do you have like a favorite style of fighting or a favorite weapon of yours? I mean, honestly, it's it's really fascinating. All of it. Just because the more that you learn about a certain, um, let's say, era in a certain culture's timeline, the more that you appreciate, you know, whatever weapon you might be wielding. Um, I would say probably the thing that I have most fun training with, though, is probably longsword. And mm -hmm. as far as style, I love both like the German and the Italian um, schools of fencing for for the long sword, just because it's like, they're both, they both have, you know, moments that, where they overlap, but then they each have, you know, particular techniques that are specific to that style of fencing. So I would say probably just German and Italian long sword. I train mainly like Meyer and Fiore, which a lot of people don't really like Fiore, but <laughs> he's kind of controversial because, but I, I find him really just, humorous i guess i find the humor in his style because he's just overly like in your face about i can kick anybody's butt does not matter anytime anywhere and i'm just like i respect that <laughs> so yeah but it's it sort of reminds me of attila the hun 
Exactly. <laughs> but he he was like that too. But nine times out of ten, he could because you know when when you have a big giant Hun man running at you full force with a big sword, it, it intimidates most people. I I would imagine. Yeah, I would I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, out of curiosity, you, you've you've. You've dived so far into uh, into Hema and into this uh, uh, the swordsmanship weaponry. Do you think maybe this will this has inspired you to pursue a niche uh, within uh, this sort of uh, category for filmmaking? Like, do you want to make more um, sword related, uh, maybe fantasy related films, or are you kind of open to uh, uh, different kinds of genres? I'm open to, to all genres, but absolutely. I 1000% just love getting to choreograph fights. And I think it adds another layer too, because I would say my biggest inspiration when it comes to fight choreography in general is Jackie Chan. To me, that guy mm. is the master. And it's not just because- He is the master. Right? Yes. And it's mm -hmm. not just because, you know, he's a very extremely skilled martial artist. It's because he really makes sure that fight <laughs> incorporates the story and the characters and exactly what's going on. And I feel like a lot of Hollywood movies don't really do that. They're starting to get better, but mm -hmm. they don't really make it entertaining. And Jackie Chan has always made it to where it's just, there's humor in there too. And so that's what I try to, um, to incorporate in each of the, the fights in my movies and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. So kind of adding on to that a little bit, do you, do you have a preference uh, for being behind this, uh, behind the camera or in front of the camera? Or do you just sort of love everything? I'm awful. I love it all. That's my problem. And it, and it always feels so, so I don't know. I, I'd hate people to, to think that I'm like arrogant and that they see my name all over the place on there. But I'm just like, honestly, I, I freaking love this. And I want to make sure that it's done right. I feel like Tom Cruise, you know, it's like, <laughs> he's so particular. And it's like, if you don't, if you don't understand the process, because it's so easy to screw up a movie and you know, it's like being in any kind of leadership role. If you don't have the right person at the top, you know, everything is just going to fall down from there. And so, um, I mean, it's like, it's like you count. It's like everything that you do has been such a blast. And that's why I love working with you is because it's like, if you're involved, I know it's going to be a good time because you know yeah. how to keep everything light. And it's true. And it's because you're a professional and a lot of people just aren't like that. They just are in that position because they want to see their name up there. They want that respect or whatever. But I love being behind the scenes and I love being in front of the camera, but primarily when it comes to comedy like if it's drama i'm not really too much of a dramatic actor if you will but i freaking love comedy so that's that's definitely my thing well nobody likes drama because you got to save the drama for your mama am i right scuffles uh, save the drama for your mama get yourself what? a llama go to uh -oh. the bahamas get yourself a llama or, or you could save the drama for a llama, if you if you just have a llama. See, I, like I prefer a no drama llama. Yes, I, as I'm sure we all would, because no, yeah, because because I think most people do like llamas, but when llamas have a lot of baggage, it's nobody nobody wants that. Nobody has time for that. But um, no, you know, Shayna, I I really appreciate you saying that, and you know, I, I have never. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure pretty much anyone who's come in contact with you, I, I don't see how anybody could ever suspect you. Excuse me, suspect you of being arrogant. I think you're just a, uh, you're a very intellectually curious person. Um, you have a lot of interests, and what I appreciate you is that when you're interested in something, you just sort of dive into it and you, you learn about it, you fall in love with it and you perfect the craft, whatever that may be, whether it's swordsmanship, whether it's acting, whether it's writing and directing. And I think that that's a remarkable, uh, skill to have. And, you know, and 
you know, not to give any sort of unsolicited words of wisdom, but I, I, I think that that's serving you well in life, and I, I hope you build more onto that because we, we need more people like you in the world. Well, that's, that's extremely kind. Thank you so much, Kim. Of course, it something from some, you it means a lot. And as another creator to a creator, like, I appreciate the hard work that you put into it. Therefore, putting your name on something is a good thing. You got to represent yourself wherever you do the hard work. Thank you, Scuffles. That's very true. And speaking, speaking of, of that... that uh, being a, a, a content creator, we want to know how we can support you, and uh, where do we go to? Because uh, you have a you have a Patreon and you have a YouTube, so uh, uh, tell tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so my YouTube is primarily it's honestly just kind of all over the place because I also do music. I like posting fitness videos and stuff like that occasionally because if there's anything I understand more uh it would probably be like fitness and um and people who don't know anything about fitness who want to learn about fitness so i try to make workouts fun and things like that because i am not a conventional workout person either i don't enjoy going to the gym at 6 a.m doing deadlifts and squats and, and you know chest presses and everything like that for the rest of my life like it's boring so um yeah, my YouTube is that Shana Chick, just like my Instagram handle and TikTok and all that stuff. Um, so is Patreon, it's just patreon.com slash that Shana Chick. I try to um I try to upload at least once a month to my YouTube right now. Mm -hmm. And then um yeah, usually it's it's been sword stuff and random like eating like a Scottish Highlander for 24 hours and, and things like that. So just kind of all over the place. Anything that interests me or that people request, I try to do. Um, I also post music occasionally. So, uh, yeah, Patreon patrons get, like, exclusive benefits and uh, can get their name in the credits and stuff like that for the long-form videos. Excellent. And I almost forgot about your music. You you have covers of uh, Toss a Coin uh, for your Witcher. Uh, cause we, you know, we talked about Witcher at the top of the hour. And uh, you also have, uh, you've got Game of Thrones. You like Irish folk music too. So like, I know you have a lot of uh, little little jigs on there. So there's a little bit of everything for everybody. Um, so we're running out of time, but I just, I want to know um, in, in the in the fascinating world of Shana Ray Funderburk, uh, what's up next? Gosh, you know, that's a really good question. Um, I really want to do some more music. I haven't been doing enough of that lately, and I keep thinking about it. Um, I've been playing a little bit more with some friends around town on the Celtic side, so I'm hoping to get some more covers up there. So if anybody has some random geeky tune that they want me to cover, I am open to requests. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I that have, and then probably I working on a new short soon. Oh, yes, please. Oh, I will, for definitely. Uh, okay, so... Uh, are you allowed to tell us anything about the short, or uh, is it? Do, do we have those uh, little pesky NDAs in play? It total work in progress, and it's not even to the point where I would even have an NDA in place because that's how early it is. But I'm hoping to, that this one would be more of like a horror comedy with, of course, swords. So. Nice. Well, well, I tell you what, Shana. Whenever, um, uh, whenever it uh, starts to flesh out, uh, pun intended, um, you're more than welcome to come back on. We'll talk more about it. And uh, heck, if you even want to, uh, if it's not too pushy, if you want to break out the bazooki and play us a jig, uh, we'll have you on for that too. Awesome! I will. <laughs> I will totally take you up on that offer. <laughs> Great. Well, hey, Shayna, I know we were uh, uh, sort of on a limited time tonight, but uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I hope you had a great time. And like I said, please come back anytime. Thank you so much. I will be here every week then in that case. Oh, as much great. As, okay. as much as you will have me. <laughs> All right, Scuffles, what are you doing for the rest of your life? <laughs> oh, I guess coming here. All right. <laughs> same bad time, same bad channel. <laughs>
<laughs> it's set. All right. Yep. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much. It's been such a blast. And I can't wait for the next time. Seriously. Likewise. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> yeah, she was just, I had to pick her up because she was chewing on the chair. She was like, pick me up, mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well y'all take care have an amazing rest of your night morning combo <laughs> you too Shana thank you so much thank you bye alright well uh, just the two of us so what do you think Scuffles I think it's a really cool thing and I'm gonna check out more of her videos later because it's really a cool idea to play with swords for sure yes she has Amazing. She really does have amazing content with the sword play. Uh, even her uh, weight loss journey uh, video that she posted was really great. Um, and she does a lot, a lot of really neat covers. She's very talented. But um, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll definitely have her back on at some point uh, very soon. Uh, she's a great guest. Uh, I guess before we leave, let's uh, kind of run through the gamut real quick because we got a few things going on uh we just put out the the seven deadly sins that's c-i-n-n-s um so tell me about the showcase how was it the showcase was fabulous um we got there a little bit late so we uh were almost not let in but oh. um i got into the show just in time for them to announce ours and they uh they played it and i said some things out loud for comedic effect and <laughs> uh, then it ended and i got a fun pin that says filmmaker on it nice okay fun wow i, I really i really wish i could have been there uh that it, it sounds like a good night third coast is a good venue uh i've uh had the privilege to perform there a couple of times. I had uh, a lot of a lot of fond memories. Um, so uh, so the showcase went well, and then you've also got some new music in the works, don't you? Yes, I do have some new music. I'm working on my new album, uh, but first I have a single coming out on November third. Uh, oh, it's wow. going to be called. I love Bond. Of course. Bond! 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 If you don't mind, just a, a quick shout out, uh, if I may. I'm wearing a... I've decided I want to do something where, if I can, if I can remember most, mostly, uh, I want to give shout outs uh, to um, podcasters, con excuse me, content creators, or... Um, uh, other horror hosts uh, that I know or admire or for some reason I have their merchandise. So I actually, I'm wearing a shirt for uh, a comedian uh, named Keanu C. Thompson. And uh, I met her in LA and I got a shirt from her. So I'm wearing her shirt promoting her show Keanu Cast, which I don't think is a podcast. I think it's almost like one of those uh, I IRL streams or something like that so uh but anyway she's a fascinating person um she talks like a flapper girl from the 20s but she as far as i know she's not uh um she's not an immortal uh nymph from that lived through the 1920s she's uh she's a normal modern woman as far as i can tell but i have been fooled but anyway so i just thought i'd show that off real real quick and just say uh thank you keanu for the shirt and thank you for the laughs when you were here in Los Angeles. And I'm glad you survived World War III. I think she'll know what that means. But anyway, um, Scuffles, you have anything else? No, um, just that I'm dressed as a mummy. And this is the last time I'm going to wear this because this costume is too small for me now. It, oh. it starts to creak. Well, you, it, too, too much, too much cinema, cinnamon. <laughs> Many cinnamon rolls, <laughs> and you're allergic. I'm so getting they... fat. They may... Oh, so you're not getting fat. You're just you're you're puffed up because you're allergic to cinnamon. <laughs> sure, sure, that's what you'll say. 
But I, I do love your costume, Scufflemus. This was this was a lot of fun. Next year we gotta uh, we we gotta go really all out. But I I I have no idea how we're gonna do that. But we've got literally a year to figure it out. So. <laughs> Agree. Well, before we go, my friend, uh, any parting words of wisdom? Um, I had one earlier. If you give me just a moment. Uh, sure, please, take your time. Um, crud. I thought of it earlier. And I thought, oh, I'm going to need to remember this. But uh, I guess I'll just reiterate my old adage of if you're in the street or if you're on the asphalt, it's your fault. Right. Especially if you drop your candy. This is an important thing to yeah, yeah, keep your candy. Keep your candy in your bag. Check your candy. Check your candy. You might find an entire <laughs> symphonic uh, uh, orchestra inside of them. Oh, you know, I totally... So, um, you had... Sort of, m maybe a little bit of a rhetorical question. You, you had a good time on uh, Check Your Candy? Yeah, I did. I did. Great. Cause I, I did too. Uh, the only thing... Uh, I'm sure it's probably not a big deal... So you know how at the end of it you you got to do the uh, the tagline uh be sure to check your candy. We didn't do that. Oh. Huh. I well but it's it's probably on me. I probably you know I I talk a lot. So I I probably just I took up way too much of their time so they probably didn't have the time to do the send off with me but uh but it was a lot of fun. Um, they did say something about us uh, together coming back on, um, and I, I I would love to if you're up for it. That would be a cool idea. Great. Okay. Well, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about it uh, off air. Uh, but for all of you watching, now you know how the sausage is made, and you know, go out, have fun on your Halloween this year. But for us, I guess in a way, spoopy season is. Is is every day? Well, at least it, it is, is every for me. Day. It is every day, but still, uh, for all you humans, Halloween only comes once a year. So, give it your all, live your best life, but most importantly, be safe. Have a happy Halloween from all of us here at the Count and Scuffle shows, and always remember to keep scuffling and keep counting, but mostly scuffling, but also counting. <laughs>